Hey everyone, welcome back. Happy New Year. Good to be here again with you all. Um, so let's see. Today I want to I want to talk more deeply about homeopathy and this medicine. And um let, let me get into a little bit here why mm, and kind of where the podcast is heading this 2024. Now you know, I'm not huge on New Year's resolutions. Honestly, most people forget about them two weeks into January. And uh, this, of course, um, is the month. January is the month where the most gym memberships are started. And February is the month where the most gym memberships are canceled. <laughs> so um, I think of New Year's resolutions in a little bit of a different way. And I know that everybody thinks about them in their own unique way. But personally, I take a couple weeks at the end of December and beginning of January to spend time thinking about what I really want to accomplish um, in the coming year. And for work and the work I share with all of you, one, one big part of what I'd like to accomplish this year um, is to help people better understand homeopathic medicine. Um, so the first episode of the year here is going to get the ball rolling with regard to teaching you all about, um, homeopathic medicine and deep diving into this topic. Now, for those of you who are on my mailing list and receive my weekly newsletter last week, you received a video of why I practice homeopathy and what this medicine is capable of. And I also, um, put that video up on YouTube I will say, including this podcast here today, which I'm certain will come down within 24 to 48 hours or or soon after, <laughs> um, my stuff doesn't tend to stick around long on YouTube because they don't like what I have to say. Uh, so just saying that. Um, so if you can't find that, um, why I practice homeopathy, what it's capable of, if you can't find that on my YouTube channel, please let me know and I will send you my Vimeo link for that video. It has not been taken down on, on that platform as of yet. Okay, um, but you know, during this episode, I want to cover some, some very specific things with regard to homeopathy. One, I wanna help you get clear about what this medicine is. Two, I wanna help you understand what homeopathy is capable of. Um, and three, I want to address health conditions that this medicine can support and, you know, dare I say cure. And let me just inject this ridiculous statement saying that I had this podcast and anything I share with you isn't, um, you know, cannot diagnose, treat or cure any condition and isn't to be used as medical advice. You all know what to do with that statement. Um, so, uh, I want to address these, this, this area of homeopathy today, um, and whether you're a health practitioner or someone interested in health and healing, or you're wanting to study homeopathy and you're considering learning this medicine and you're wanting to know, is this a good fit for you? This episode should really help to deepen your understanding of this very under-recognized medicine and, and, you know, one of my goals is why I want to teach people more about this medicine and help them understand it more is because, and I, and I suspect by the end of this episode, it'll become clear to you that what homeopathy is capable of is, is pretty astounding. And so let's spread this knowledge so more and more people understand this medicine and, and th so they can either study it themselves if they want to be a healer or if they're, they are a healer and or so they can um, use it for their own healing journey or the healing journey of their family um, to help support that process in very, very effective, safe, non-suppressive ways. So this episode should really help to deepen your understanding of this um, medicine. Okay, um, before I dive into this topic, I wanna say thank you Really, thank you so much to those of you who've 
hopped over to our online farm store and have purchased our vitamin D rich lard, our rose body butter, um, our other farm goodies like our chocolates. Thank you so much. Your support keeps the heartbeat of our farm going literally. And we hope it keeps your heartbeat going <laughs> as well. Um, for those of you interested in checking out our farm, farm store, if you haven't done so already, um, you can do so by visiting ohokanejo.com, O-J-O-C-O-N-E-J-O.com and, and check it out, whether it's just to go by and see what we're doing or check out some of our products. We um, would love to have you come by and visit. And my wife puts out a, a farm blog as well, which I find highly entertaining. She's a great writer. And you can, you can check that out over on the site as well. Lastly, I'm very excited to announce that I am going to start teaching homeopathy this 2024 in, in a, a new way. I'm going to be offering level one through five trainings. And the first level one training begins on March 7th, 2024. Um, level one is a three month training with uh, weekly, live weekly classes, live cases, paper clinic cases. And the focus of level one really is to help you lay a solid foundation when it comes to understanding how to practice homeopathic medicine from a classical standpoint in a very effective, knowledgeable way. You can read more about the training on my site, heathershepherd.com. Go to the practitioner training tab and you can read all about it there as well as the other levels. And if you're interested in studying with me for this level one training, I will be accepting 12 students and you can apply and inquire about the program on my site and you can um, apply today. Uh, once the 12 spots are filled, I will close the level one training um, for the time being. So if that's something that's that you've been wanting to do for a while, um, send me an email, go over to the site, apply for the course and... Um, we can reserve your, your spot. Okay, let's learn more about homeopathy right here today. Let, let's get the ball rolling with regard to this topic. And I wanna start out by sharing why I practice this medicine, okay? Because I think by starting here, it may answer a lot of questions that you may have with regard to homeopathy. And then I'll, I'll deep dive into this, you know, um, as we get into the episode, but, um, I've personally, I want to share a little bit about my own personal healing journey and, and studies and so forth. I've studied a lot of, I've studied a lot of alternative forms of medicine. I've been trained extensively in many forms of medicine, a holistic medicine, I should say from ancestral nutrition to Chinese medicine and acupuncture to exercise physiology to even, I know not most people don't know this about me, to shamanism. Yes, I had a seven-year stint in studying shamanism, which I wouldn't mind, you know, taking back, to be honest. But that's what your 20s are for, doing random shit that you learn from. And you're like, honestly, what I got out of that training was how to fine-tune my shit detector. Like, when you go to a practitioner... How can you tell if what they're offering is absolute nonsense or if they're really onto something here, if this is going to be something that really supports me? Or how do you know when you read something or listen to a YouTube or so forth, whatever it may be, if this person like, hey, yeah, that actually makes sense. That that sounds accurate or this is a crock of crap, right? That's what my shamanism studies helped me achieve how to detect the horse crap from the roses and, 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 you know, what, what's actually really accurate and true and, and how, um, to determine that. I don't know if any of you can relate with regard to your studies or what you read or, or so forth, but that for me was, was very helpful in fine tuning. Hey, this sound, this, this is accurate. This person is a, a genuinely honest person who, you know, is looking to better the world versus this person is, is not. And what they're saying is actually total horseshit. <laughs> so, um, so I studied various forms of medicine because 
because one, I'm interested in healing. You know, my moon is in Virgo. I, I am curious about healing. I'm curious about the earth and cooking and growing food and, and so forth. So that's just naturally something that's really um, interesting to me. It's something that I'm really called to. But also I, I was studying various forms of medicine because I was struggling personally to find relief from my TBI, my traumatic brain injury that I experienced in my early 20s. And I'm not lying when I say I've spent thousands of dollars and gone to probably, I don't know, 70 plus practitioners over the course of that time, which was many years in a row in my early healing days, seeking relief from my TBI. And, you know, none of it worked. Honestly, it didn't. The acupuncture, the shamanism, the strict dieting, the chiropractic, the meditation, the namaste, none of it worked. Sure, some of it provided relief for, for a few hours, maybe a few days, but none of the treatments, none of the approaches lasted and some of them actually made my symptoms worse. Some of them, I had to get treatment for the freaking treatment that messed me up. And it was like, man, I had this one chiropractor and, and I'm not saying I don't like chiropractic because I think it's an, it's amazing that you just have to go to the, to the right person, which I had no idea what that even meant when I was in my, you know, early twenties, right? This dude messed my neck up so bad after my TBI that I literally had vertigo for at least six months after that session with him. It what And then I tried to go to people to try to fix that freaking issue. And it was so frustrating. Six months might have been on the short end of, of the stick there, but honestly. So um, when it came to making lasting progress with my TBI, there were, there were, there were two, two big winners that hit home, which was sunlight and homeopathy. And I can say over the past decade plus of implementing these two therapies, not only with myself, but with my clients, with hundreds of people who struggle with various health issues, the combination of sunlight and homeopathy have been impressive to say the least. So this leads me to the question that I just asked. I told you I was going to, to talk about why do I practice homeopathy? And, and it's because it has the ability to accomplish something that other modalities and therapies they're simply incapable of achieving. Not that they don't have their own strengths, okay? Because I'm all about playing to playing to each other's strengths. Whether it's like, you know, if you're born on this earth to be a healer and you go into sales, it's like, that's not playing to your strengths. Similarly, if you use um, acupuncture to get to the root of your health struggles, that's not playing to that medicine strengths. It's impossible to get to the root of the of somebody's chronic health struggles with that medicine. Similarly, if if somebody is takes a, a prescription medication or goes and gets a jab, and they're like, "Hey, you know, I'm really going to prevent this or get to the root cause of this," those things aren't preventative. They're not root cause. They can't access that place. The strength of homeopathy is this, and I'm going to talk about that in, in more here in just a minute, is its ability to get to the to the root. So, you know, now before I go here, right, you know, um, I want to expand on this, on this concept of root cause medicine, because literally it's become as trendy as, you know, gender pronouns. And, you know, I feel like I'm somebody who can say that it's like, you know, it's, it's become trendy, right? And root cause this, root cause that. And honestly, I wish I didn't have to use that phrase root cause. It's like, I've been racking my brain trying to, okay, what's another way of saying this? What's another way of saying root cause? But, you know, root cause takes us, okay, it, it helps us get clear. It's like, okay, what's the root of this issue, right? So, there's a lot behind this phrase. It's very trendy and it's become something that people, healers just spout out without really understanding what it really means and 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 um and and myself included. When I was first studying medicine, oh yeah, this is gonna help you to the root cause, that's gonna get to the root cause. And through experience, you're like, no, actually, those things have their own strengths. It's not root cause medicine. That is the strength of homeopathy. So 
just, you know, um, I want to focus on this topic of root cause just, just for a minute here, because it's going to help you better understand one, why I practice homeopathy and what it's capable of. And also I hope it helps you get clear about what does root cause actually mean? Like, what are we saying here besides just spouting out this phrase? For one, we have to understand that there is never one root cause to any disease. Never one root cause, especially modern day. There are always a handful of root causes with any chronic health condition. So what this means is root cause is not singular. It encompasses many things. And these root causes build over the course of one's life. It starts from preconception. Actually, it starts many generations back and encompasses everything you've experienced and, and have been exposed to, um, you know, since birth. And, and especially that which has left a dent, that which has left a mark on your organism in a suppressive or emotionally challenging way. So the root cause of why you struggle with what you struggle with is a history book. It has history. There are patterns and triggers, and there are, these are all unique to you, to your genetics, to your genetic predispositions, to your experiences. So during a homeopathic intake, a well-trained homeopath will ask many questions, all of which should help the homeopath see why you're struggling with what you're struggling with. And once that's actually determined, once these your, your unique root causes of why you're struggling with what you're struggling with is determined, okay, then now we can get you an actual remedy, an actual, actual treatment strategy that targets that. And that's unique to each person. Homeopathic medicine, when practiced to its strengths, hones in on this and the remedy that's prescribed starts to, it, it enters your organism and begins to heal this history, this history that created imbalances in the first place. Now, you know, homeopathy isn't a miracle cure medicine. It has to be practiced with precision and depth and awareness to really help make changes to the organism. So I find it very helpful. I know this was helpful along my own personal heal healing journey that we have to understand something about our health. And that is the, the place that, that we're in, that most people are in today, the pickle that most people are in with their health, with, with what they struggle with on a daily basis, is because of a series of events that ha that they that they've experienced and been exposed to over the course of their life and healing a chronic thing a chronic disease is going to take time diligence patience commitment most people want a pill oh just you know just take this you know just take that right it's like not going to it's not going to work the 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 shit show we've created <laughs> You know, myself included, which have been jabbed up the, the wazoo from a young age. And thankfully, I'm um, old enough <laughs> that I didn't require my my jab schedule was quite low compared to the kids today. It's like not even a, it's not even a comparison. Right. But but what we need to know is that. We need to engage in modalities, homeopathy, for example, that change that that help change the momentum of this history of this story, um, and help change the momentum that the history you've been exposed to um, is able to stop and change the momentum, change the direction. Right now, the momentum of many people's health is going in one direction, and that's towards a chronic disease state. Some people are moving in that direction at a very slow pace. Others are on a direct beeline to that place. Which brings me to the very important question, what is homeopathy capable of? 
Okay. Homeopathy helps to not only slow this progression towards a chronic disease state, be it fast or slow, but can actually change the momentum, can actually reverse the direction, moving one away from a chronic disease state. You know, I want to backtrack just, just a little bit to help you understand how we got in the chronic disease epidemic place that so many people are in today right now. You know, how did we get here in the first place? And to do so, sure, we have to consider diet. We have to consider environment. We have to consider work environment. Um, my wife was just telling me today about this book she's reading. And literally the book is, is by a very famous author. And this individual, <laughs> um, literally takes measures not to go outside. Like she literally takes, she creates her life in such a way that limits her need to go outside, to go outdoors. She has a dog and that dog, you know, she doesn't, she's, she doesn't want to take it out to walk it or have it go to the bathroom. So she just puts a piece of fake grass in her house for the dog to take a piss and shit on. Um, and this person is an alcoholic, is addicted to food, and is surprised that she's depressed and on medications for arthritis and high blood pressure. She's in her early 40s. And if she makes it to 50, then, you know, I'll give you a million dollars, right? But, you know, like, so so that kind of lifestyle, oh, yeah, that that's like, and this person's like, you know, morbidly obese, well, yeah, that's, that's going to be, a, that's going to, that's a serious beeline to chronic disease. Right. And when I heard this, I was like, oh my God, people actually live like that. Like, holy shit. What a choice that is. That is so interesting to me, but you know, so, so we have to understand, um, you know, how did we get in this chronic disease epidemic place that we're in right now. We have a we have people like this woman I'm describing here, right? We also have to consider though something that isn't considered are the heavy hitters, okay? Like for example, well, let me I'll go back to that. Let me let me try to stay focused here for a minute. The heavy hitters are the sources that that expedite the momentum towards a chronic disease state. They move us closer to a chronic disease state and at a faster pace. They activate, the heavy hitters activate in a very deep way our genetic predispositions, which every human on this planet have, has. We all have genetic predispositions. Do we activate those? Do we slow those? Do we change the momentum of, of, of those? Do we completely reverse those? So let's just, you know, review what are the heavy hitters? Well, we have jabs, antibiotics, prednisone, other steroid drugs, prescription meds, even OTC meds. Then we have street drugs, drug addiction. We have alcoholism. All of these are going to be a beeline to chronic disease state. Then we have mental health drugs. These are the heavy hitters. Then we have things like chemo, radiation, very heavy hitters. Jabs, exceptional heavy hitters. Prednisone, heavy hitters. Then we have to consider other heavy hitters on the mental emotional level, abuse, trauma, PTSD, unresolved grief, emotional experience that are hard, that are challenging, that are too much for the organism so much so that they leave an imprint on the organism that the, it's hard for that organism to get past that. They haven't been well, well since that event, since that emotional experience. These are the heavy hitters. These are the substances and experiences that increase and move the momentum away from optimal health and toward a chronic disease state. They're a beeline to chronic disease and they have a very strong impact on the immune system. How did this woman who can't, who's so lazy, she can't get off of her couch to take her dog outside to take a piss. How did she get there in the first place? Well, something she was exposed to, AKA probably a, a, a lot of these heavy hitters, set up her organism to be lackadaisical, obese, craving uh, substances, craving sugar and carbs, 
being overweight. She didn't just get there, you know, by happenstance. The heavy hitters have a very strong impact on the immune system. And, and let's talk about the immune system for, for a minute. Let's get clear here. The immune system is supposed to produce symptoms to help protect us. Just think about that for a minute, right? Symptoms to help protect us, to help protect us from going into to a chronic disease state, to help protect us from, from an early death. And when we suppress those symptoms with the heavy hitters, especially in cases that are unnecessary, right? Sure, yeah, sometimes there may be an emergency situation when antibiotics may need to be given, okay, right? Let's, we, we, we're not just gonna say never ever will I ever, right? It's emergency care. But today antibiotics are given like candy. Statin drugs are handed out like they're water. High blood pressure meds are given without thinking about, hmm, why is this body producing the symptoms of high blood pressure? Why might this be? Why is it producing this symptom? How can we get to the root of that rather than covering it up with a Band-Aid? The immune system is supposed to produce symptoms essentially to keep us healthy. And it's supposed to produce symptoms in a very acute way, in a way where the symptoms are short lasting and help us to actually feel better, to get over the hump of, of feeling not well to then feeling well. For example, you develop a bruise after you hit your shin. The bruise is a symptom your body produces to heal itself, right? But our immune systems have become so weak, so compromised from the heavy hitters that our immune systems are, are literally incapable of producing symptoms that are productive modern day symptoms that actually help us heal. So instead, we experience low-grade nagging symptoms on a daily basis or a regular basis because the immune system isn't strong enough to produce those symptoms in a way that facilitates healing. It is rare for any human today to be untouched by modern medicine. I literally know of one person. Most people know zero. Fortunately, I know one person. He's in his 90s, never had any allopathic medicine. His mind is sharp. His body's in great condition for a 90-year-old. It's impressive. It's like, wow, you can tell a difference. Put somebody who's been medicated and jabbed in one side and then show this individual on the other, it's like night and day. It's a flat out lie to think or believe that eventually we'll have to um, be medicated with, with allopathic drugs. There are many other options. We are just feared into thinking and believing differently. Now, you know, let, let's be clear about something because I feel like most, most healthcare practitioners, <laughs> we, we have to be honest because they, they, this, who wants to talk about death? No one, right? Not, not many people at least, but the end game in life is that we all eventually will meet our death. But how we get to that end point is the question. Do we do so by bombarding the body with he the heavy hitters, with suppressives that wipe out our life force, that make us function like zombies, that make us incontinent, that cause our memory and experiences to fade, that make us look jaundiced and lifeless? Or do we do so in a natural way, a way where the body requires the least allopathic invasion as possible, maybe even zero allopathic intervention? This path almost always involves the least amount of suffering. When I work with clients who are going to pass to the other side and they're taking a homeopathic remedy, their journey Two, the other side is remarkably different than those who are hooked up to machines and, and pumped full of drugs, honestly. Um, their transition is easeful with very little suffering and they, they don't, they're not like hanging on by a machine and with these like 
horrific medications, they go very quickly as a result, excuse me, and very peacefully. It is quite, it, it's really remarkable to watch. And I've, I've seen both cases. I've seen somebody on allopathic medicine and how that journey towards their last breath goes versus somebody who's not on allopathic medicine and who's choosing to do it the more natural way. It's peaceful. It's gentle. It, it's like watching nature do its thing. You know, uh, what we've been brainwashed to believe is that allopathic drugs remove disease. <laughs> <laughs> they fucking taught us. They, they like most people think that they, they really they're preventative medicine. Now, they uh, <laughs> prescriptions may appear as they achieve this from from an outside perspective, you know, but the truth is they make matters much worse. They they suppress the symptoms that your body is producing in an attempt to heal and interrupting this process in a suppressive way pushes the pathology deeper into the body. And this is a beeline to a chronic disease state. Basically a chronic disease state is no somebody who can no longer get a high fever or produce productive symptoms that actually help them feel better. But is then now just this, this, this list of nagging symptoms on a daily or regular basis that the body is incapable of overcoming because the immune system is too weak to do so. So what is homeopathy capable of? Uh, it's capable of reversing chronic disease. It's capable of changing the momentum of one's journey towards a chronic disease and changing that momentum away from a chronic disease state. Depending on the case, the momentum will either be drastically slowed or reversed under correct homeopathic care. Now, like, all right. You know, what What are the diseases and disorders homeopathy is capable of, of helping to support, you know? Um, and to be honest, let's just, let's just say, and I think I've mentioned this on the podcast in the past, but homeopathy used to be the core cur curriculum of medical school training. Honest, it, it did. Before the Flexner Report in what, 1910-ish? That came out and they, the, the, they're like, no, 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 no. This is taking far too long to come up with a treatment plan. You're spending far too much time with, with each patient. This is not a productive way of, of medicine. This is not a productive way of seeing people. How, oh, you know, you're not going to be able to help that many people. How many people are, is allopathy really helping? I mean, that's the question, right? So we've only gotten worse since allopathic medicine, since we've taken homeopathy totally out of the medical curriculum and now focus on a small amount of pharmaceutical drugs, Right. So homeopathy, the list of, of the diseases and disorders that it's capable of supporting, healing, is, is it's long. It's a long list. There's everything from colitis and Crohn's to hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, hormonal struggles, calcification issues, T2 diabetes, detox issues, jab injuries, to things like food poisoning, ear infection, bronchitis, my TBI, a miracle, honest to God. I was just on my Sunlight RX walk this morning with my wife. And, you know, so many years have gone by and I was, there used to be a time in my life when my wife and I, um, we would go on a hike in the beginning, very, very, very beginning days of our relationship. She must have thought, I, I mean, I'm so thankful she stuck it out with me, right? But in those beginning day years when my health was a shit show, there were, there were days in the beginning of, of our, our dating and I would be like, Oh my God, I've literally walked for 10 minutes and I need to turn around and go back. I'm exhausted. I'm starting to have an have anxiety. And that was, we were on our, our Sunlight RX morning walk this morning. And I was like, <laughs> even me to this day, I was like, God, you know, we just, we just walked like two miles. I feel amazing. We just tread, we, we went through the snow with our dog. I was like, this is awesome. I feel great. 
wait, when did this change? I remember the time when I couldn't do this at all. There, I, I would be, I'd be just blitzed in 10 minutes. I was like, oh my God, the Sunlight RX, like literally the Sunlight RX and homeopathy. I was like, whoa, like, you know, years go by and hopefully you improve. And you're like, wait, what was that? Right? And it's like, holy shit, this this is powerful. This is healing. This is what, this is what life is about. This is, this is real medicine. I was like feeling so thankful on my walk this morning for sunlight, for homeopathy, for nature. But not only that, for, for coming to realize this information, for being put into contact way back when, when I first started to learn about Jack Cruz and he was like, go watch the sunrise. And that was the tip right there that started this whole thing for me, just that little with regard to sunlight. And then, you know, being, going from practitioner to practitioner, disappointment after disappointment with my healing and finally going to a homeopath and being like, whoa, Okay. And how long that homeopath kept me in the session and the question she asked. And I was like, you really, you're really getting somewhere here. I can tell that just by the questions you're asking me, this is totally different than any other practitioner so far. It's like, oh yeah, I remember. I remember what a blessing. What like, that's amazing. How thankful am I for that journey and for where I am today? That's why I practice homeopathy. And there is literally no disease or disorder that this medicine cannot support. I hope this episode helped you understand this medicine a little more deeply and clearly. And I look forward to teaching you more about homeopathy this year and to having those of you wanting to study this medicine in my practitioner training courses um, this 2024. I'll see you next week.